Good morning. Welcome to this edition of the Lynn Hayes Freeland Show. So we're at that time of year. We're at the holidays. We all start to think about, you know, overeating during the holidays, picking off the cookies, the fruitcake, the eggnog, you name it. That's typical holiday behavior. But for a lot of us, eating around the holidays and pretty much all year long, different set of issues, different set of challenges, and that's the conversation we're going to have this morning on the Lynn Hayes Freeland Show. Now, it's actually a continuation of a conversation that we started a couple months ago with Dr. Jasmine, Jasmine, ja, James Cena Talbot <laughs> from Point Park University. And we've got two other perspectives we're going to roll into the conversation. Dr. Rachel Tony is with the Digestive Health Division at Allegheny Health Network. Dr. Darla Timbo, who is an assistant professor of psychology at California University of, Pits, of Pennsylvania. And you also have a private counseling service as well, correct? I do. Mm -hmm. Atlas. Atlas Counseling Service. Perfect. Yes. Welcome to you all. Thanks. Welcome to the show. And I say, this is the time of year that, you know, people talk about the extra five pounds or whatever it is over the holidays, but that's not what we're talking about here. It's a bigger issue. Yeah. It's particularly for those of us who have experienced eating disorders. Mm -hmm. It can be really challenging in terms of, it's, it can be a slippery slope, depending on whether you're trying to restrict food or you're not conscious or aware of how much you're consuming. Mm -hmm. And the slippery slope on the binge side is going into that binging time. And there's other issues that are going on that can also percolate, that, that can be sort of the underlying issues mm -hmm. that come up that you turn to food. And given that the holiday times people tend to celebrate with food, mm -hmm. you're trying to be mindful of what you're consuming and how you're doing and the effect that it's having with you too, why you're eating. Some people may be eating out of loneliness. Uh, everybody doesn't have the same reaction to the holidays that everybody else does. Right, for everyone so, it's not that so for, joyful occasion. Right, uh -huh. so uh -huh. it can, what's the triggers? And being very much aware of yourself, and depending on where you are in your, <clears throat> excuse me, in your phase of recovery or beyond, you're very aware of what are you doing, what are you eating, why, et cetera. So. And Dr. Tony, I never really thought about this before until I met uh, Dr. Talbot a few months ago. Uh, but there are then layers to this conversation, and there are perspectives that women of color um, face that I didn't realize that we had our own issues when we talked about eating and eating disorders. Mm -hmm. I think in general, um, with eating disorders, there's a lot of shame and turning inward and not wanting to disclose. I think in terms of being a, a woman of color and seeking out help, there may also be issues with uh, whether or not you trust your health care provider, whether or not you have a framework to even be able to disclose those issues with family members or friends, and maybe even just the different aspects of body image that are different for women of color versus other um, races. And so those things kind of make it a barrier to even begin to question whether or not there is a problem or if there's someone who can help me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so then along those same lines, Dr. Timbo, I mean, when we then add in the emotional part of that, and we as women of color are always perceived to be the strong one, the one that carries the weight for the family, the one that carries the stress for the family, and you add all that up together, there's nothing good about any of this. Mm -hmm. I, I think that it creates um, almost like the perfect storm. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're feeling um, body image issues, if we're feeling um, like we can't trust our, our healthcare professionals, we can't trust our mental health professionals, um, and you know, we have, we lack coping skills around the holidays or any other time of the year, you know, we may turn to food and use that in an, in an unhealthy way to kind of manage those emotions, those thoughts, those feelings to kind of, you know, get us through this time of year, especially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then I'm, I'm going to bring this back around full circle. So Dr. Talbot, I know when we first met um, and, and we, we talked about this on the show and you talked about doing the first phase of research, um, a lot of this, a lot of that binge kind of eating 
was done in the dark, if you will, or mm -hmm. done in private, mm -hmm. so other people didn't know. Right. And this gets back to what they were pointing out. You tend to, it, not the holiday times, you can really hide because everybody's doing it. But typically, particularly on the binge side, you're, you're making sure that no one knows. It's, it's almost like, uh, I want to compare it to substance abuse or alcoholism, and they'll hide the bottle or they'll hide whatever. And same with food. Uh, what I may eat in front of you mm. versus what I'll go behind the door and would eat it would be day and night. So when you talk about hiding the bottle, that's like hiding the cookie wrapper or mm -hmm. hiding the cake container. Or any number of things that you may be <clears throat> consuming. Mm -hmm. You may have something that you put out on the table or you may see me eat, but in the back I could go eat the pot of spaghetti as opposed to just the bowl of spaghetti. I see. Or it's, it's along those lines that, yeah, you, you hide things, um, but they can be hidden right in front of you. Right in front of you. Uh -huh. And then I, I but know- you're not aware of the quantity that I'm consuming. Mm -hmm. I know, we have to take a commercial break, but then I wanna ask you this. So then if I'm doing that as the head of household, Am I then teaching my kids that as well, or not necessarily? I think it depends. Um, okay. I think that certainly uh, depends on if you're the head of household and your attitudes towards food then maybe influence how you react to your children eating or your loved ones eating, whether or not you feel like they are eating too much, it's time to stop, or if you are more permissive. I think it's kind of hard to generalize with family dynamics because mm -hmm. I think oftentimes uh, uh, it's such a private issue mm -hmm. that it's not something that maybe it it is disclosable because you are an authority figure, so you're probably not going to um, want to involve your children with your behaviors. More of a do as I say, not as not I do. Not as I do. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. We got to take a commercial break. We obviously have a lot more to talk about. <laughs> Don't go away when the Lynn Hayes Freeland Show continues. We'll be right back.